In this topic, we're going to discuss the structure of the heart. So, by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is the position of the heart in the thoracic cavity? What is the heart made of? What is cardiac muscle? Describe the structure of the heart in terms of chambers, vessels and valves. And then finally, how does the heart get its own supply of oxygen and nutrients? The heart is a muscular organ which in humans is between 250 and 350 grams in mass. Can you believe that it pumps about 13,000 cubic decimeters of blood each day? So it's found in your thoracic cavity behind the sternum, that breastbone, and between your two lungs. So it's made up of cardiac muscle tissue, capillaries, and connective tissue. The wall of the heart is almost entirely made up of a special type of muscle called cardiac muscle. And cardiac muscle is capable of rhythmic contraction and relaxation over a long period without fatigue. So how to identify cardiac muscle, like you can see in this photo here, it comprises net-like interconnecting cells with more than one nucleus. It's got many mitochondria and the myofilaments form cross striations. The spaces between the cardiac muscles are filled with connective tissue and capillaries. Now cardiac muscle appears striped under the microscope because it's made up of proteins called actin and myosin. And it's got numerous mitochondria because these supply the ATP. Looking at the structure of the heart. So it's covered by a tough membrane called the pericardium. And the heart is actually two separate pumps lying side by side. So when you're looking at a diagram, look where the left side is and where the right side is. So how to describe the left and right? Imagine that you're holding this piece of paper to your chest. So look where the left and right is. The left side of the heart pumps oxygenated blood to the body via the aorta. So how to identify the left side of the heart on a diagram? Look where the wall of the heart is the thickest. So on the left there, the wall of the heart is the thickest. This is because the heart has to pump blood all the way around the body on that side. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. So here you can see the two arteries, the aorta and the pulmonary artery leaving the heart. So how to identify the aorta? It kind of looks like an A, so it's that loop. The veins carry blood to the heart. So notice how on the left side of the heart you've got the pulmonary vein and on the right side you've got the superior and inferior vena cava. So the superior vena cava is at the top and this brings blood from the head and the inferior vena cava brings blood from the lower body regions. Then you've got the different chambers. You've got the atria and the ventricles. Now the atria, which are at the top there, are thin-walled and elastic. So they can expand when they collect blood. But they only have to pump blood to the ventricles. So they don't need much muscle. If you look at the ventricles, the ventricles have a much thicker muscular wall because they have to pump blood a greater distance than the atria. Notice how much thicker the left ventricle is. This is because it has to pump blood all the way around the body, so it needs to create a high pressure to overcome resistance.
Let's have a look at the different valves of the heart. Here you can see the different types of valves in the heart and these prevent the backflow of blood. So between the aorta and ventricles and the pulmonary artery and the ventricles are the semilunar valves. Then you've got the bicuspid and tricuspid valves between the atria and the ventricles. These are also called the atrioventricular valves. And the bicuspid valve is sometimes called the mitral or mitral valve. So let's have a look at the heart valves in more detail. Between the atria and the ventricles are valves that prevent the backflow of blood into the atria when the ventricles contract. And you've got two sets. You've got the left atrioventricular valve, also called the bicuspid valve, and in this diagram it's called the mitral valve. So it's formed by two cup-shaped flaps on the left side of the heart. The right atrioventricular valve is called the tricuspid valve. So how to remember which is which, which is bicuspid, which is tricuspid. Think that right starts with the letter R and tricuspid has got the letter R in it. So this has three cup shaped valves as you can see in this diagram here. To prevent the valves from turning inside out under pressure, they're attached to muscles of the heart called papillary muscles by tendons called tendinous cords or cord tendine. The muscles contract to pull the tendons down and these prevent the valve flapping upwards. The semilunar valves are pocket valves in the arteries leaving the heart and they prevent the backflow of blood back into the heart, so back into the ventricles. So have a look at this diagram on the right there where you would find the semilunar valves. Right, let's have a look at the different blood vessels. When you learn the blood vessels, write them down on flashcards. So an example would be you write aorta on the front of the flashcard and on the back you write the different features. So the aorta is connected to the left ventricle. It carries oxygenated blood to all the parts of the body except for the lungs. And the blood is under high pressure. The pulmonary artery, which is next to the aorta there, is connected to the right ventricle. It carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs and it's under relatively low pressure. The pulmonary vein is connected to the left atrium. It carries oxygenated blood back to the heart from the lungs and it's under low pressure. The vena cava is connected to the right atrium. It carries deoxygenated blood back to the heart from the tissues and it's also under low pressure. So notice that you've got the superior vena cava at the top there and inferior vena cava at the bottom. So how do you remember how to label the different chambers? Well, the first step is to label left and right. Then label the different chambers. Remember that A for atrium comes before V for ventricle, so the atrium um, or atria at the top there. If you forget which side is which, look for the thick ventricular muscle on the left ventricle as it has to pump blood all the way around the body. Next, look for the arteries. 
So first look for the loop of the aorta. It kind of looks like the small letter A. Once you have labeled that, look for the next artery that is going to be taking blood away from the heart to the lungs. And it's sitting right next door to the aorta. So that is the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary is to do with lungs. Now we need to name the veins. So veins bring blood, uh, blood back to the heart. You know that the aorta pumps blood away from the heart and it goes to the body. So the blood needs to be oxygenated. So where will it get its oxygen from? The pulmonary vein. So the pulmonary vein will be on the same side as the aorta. And the other vein is the vena cava, superior and inferior. Now we're just left with the valves. The semilunar valves are in the arteries, so label those. Then you need to decide where the tricuspid and bicuspid valves go. Remember that tricuspid has the letter R in it, so it goes on the right. That means that the bicuspid valve goes on the left. These are also called the atrioventricular valves. And then lastly, supplying the cardiac muscle with oxygen. Although oxygenated blood does pass through the left side of the heart in vast quantities, the heart actually doesn't use this oxygen. It needs its own blood supply, which it gets from its own blood vessels. These are called the coronary arteries, and they branch off the aorta shortly after it leaves the heart. Now, blockage of these arteries, for example, by a blood clot, can lead to something called myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack. This is because an area of the muscle that the artery supplies will not have oxygen and it can die. So have a look at the coronary arteries in this diagram. Right, before we end off, here's a diagram to test yourself with the different labels. And here you've got the different labels. And that concludes our lesson, the end.